guys, welcome back to Creativity and Inspiration. I'm Lisa. How's everybody doing? It is Monday. I'm on time. Happy dance. Hubby didn't have any uh, appointments today, which hopefully means I'll get this all filmed, all edited, and posted by tonight. That's my goal. My glasses that I always wear broke, and I got these. I like these. They have orange flowers. I gotta show you. They're so cute. They came off Amazon, you know. Just, I got like six or six pairs for like $11, $15, something. I'll link them below. You can go look at them. If you need like little reading glasses, and they come in all strengths. These are 1.5 because, you know, as you age, your eyeballs for reading don't focus. Now, I know I'm looking at you, but I really can't see you in these. So today, what are we talking about? We are talking about journal closures. I had a different video planned and I'm kind of, I don't know. I don't really know if you would like the topic of it. So I might put it on the community board, you know, where it pops up and if you're subscribed, you get to see it. Where I ask questions, what you want to see, kind of take little polls. I'll put it over there. Um, it's about different themes for holiday journals, not different ideas for holiday journals. So there is a difference. Different themes would be like not doing the same old red, green, and white themes or not doing the same blue and white or orange and yellow. So I'll put that up as a poll. And Friday, so Friday's video might change. I'll have it as poll. It'll either be different themes for journals, something new, something different, or it's going to be ideas for, uh, nope. Or it's going to be ideas for an easy, fast junk journal. No, an easy first. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Or it's going to be ideas for an easy first fast junk journal same thing interchangeable so i will put that up on the community i will post that on the community board and if you're subscribed you'll see it if you're not uh you don't so if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to have a voice and be a part of these polls that i post hit that subscribe button and that little bell now because i really do try to put out videos that interest you guys and i always check it always but today we are talking ideas for different types of closures for your journals. So why don't you come on in. I'm going to go bring in my HelloFresh box real quick because it just got here. And I'll be right back. Okay guys, weird angle I know, but you don't really need to see me. Let me move this out of the way. I have a whole stack of journals here and we're going to talk about... Okay, I have a whole stack of different journals here, and we're going to talk about the way they're all bound, closed, and the different ways you can do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll start with the ones that have closures, and probably we're going to start from ones you already use, and hopefully move into a few you haven't thought about yet. So this first one is my very first journal I made. I love this journal. It's an altered book. How I made the closure for this is I used a patch on the back and glued it down and put some pink ribbon through it and then it just ties like this. That was the easiest way. Um, I didn't have to worry about how big it got because it could get really big and it would still tie. Now you probably were thrown off because you probably saw this button and you probably thought, oh, she's doing a button closure, which I really could have done the button closure the same way. Put the um, ribbon behind here attached and then wound it around, but that's not it. The button actually hides a hidden message. So this is simply, I attach the uh, ribbon on the back, bring it around, and tie it. Now the same version of that, 
is to attach the ribbon on the spine and then bring it around to tie it. I didn't make this one. I bought it, but same theory. It's attached at the spine in both sides and it comes around and ties. Okay. So that is attaching the ribbon on the spine or the back and just tying. Another way you can do it is to poke holes in your cover on the front and back and then attach your ribbon with knots and then have a closure this way and tie it. I made this one. And you can put rivets in there if you have, I think it's a crocodile, I do not. So I just poked a hole. You don't have to have anything special. I poked a hole with my trusty little tool like this. I poked the hole, knotted it, and that's it. Just tie it and it's closed. That's an easy one. I love all the ones I've shown you so far. Now, a really cool way to do a closure is like this where you bring a flap up and you have two buttons and you could wind some thread around them. I got this in a swap so that was how it was closed. I have since lost the ribbon but that's okay. So you can close them that way. You could also poke your holes and run a ribbon through each side and tow it. Tie it and just have a cute little flap that way as well. to the ones that actually don't have any closures on them. So why did I bring these out? Because we're going to talk about a few other different ways for closures. One of these ways is to use Velcro. And Velcro would actually be way easier than you're probably thinking. Now it may not be pretty. Of course you can cover it and disguise it. So let me show you how I would do a Velcro closure. And I'm going to use this journal. Through these two journals, just for clarity, I've made these two I made. This one I got in a swap. There's a couple of ways you could do Velcro journals. One is you could make a flap like this. Put your Velcro on the inside tab here and right here. Fold it over and you've got a Velcro closure. That is very cool, very simple. All you did was you cut your bottom cover long enough to go over. But you have to know how fat is your journal going to get and how well would this work. You know, is it one signature? Are you not going to be stuffing it with stuff? Are you just going to be writing in it? <clears throat> Versus is it going to be one that you stuff stuff in constantly and it's going to grow? So think about that because you can still use this method of the flap and the velcro you just might want to extend your flap out and in the beginning it might be a little wonky looking but in the end when it's full it's going to fit nice like this so that's one way another way is say you've made a journal like this this one's all paper and you want to add either a button closure or a velcro closure what can you do what can you do? Now I'm just grabbing some scrap pieces of paper just to show you. You can add a scrap piece of paper onto your front and back. Okay. Measure out how fat your journal is going to be. So let's see. And I'm just guesstimating that my journal is not going to get very fat. Okay. And you just measure them however far you need. And I'm measuring them probably, it looks like that. Hold on. So it looks like this. So one is on the front like this. One is on the back like this. And then you put your Velcro inside the two tabs and you have a unique closure that people haven't seen before. Now, of course, your tabs aren't going to be weird like mine and not match anything on this journal. Your tabs would match, would look very purposeful. 
okay? My tabs are an example. Okay, just like that. You can also do this with buttons. Extend some tabs out. You can make, if you can make buttonholes, you could do this with fabric and put the button in the inside here. This is your buttonhole and button it closed. If you are not able to do buttons, you could do a button on each side of the outside of these and run your twine back and forth like that. If you want to add something new, of course, you can always do the buttons on here as well. But now, another way you could close these, and I actually don't have, yeah, I did. Hold on one second. Okay, something else you could do to close your journals is to go to the thrift stores and get belts and use the buckle on the front. Especially like this rope belt because there's not holes. You just put the buckle wherever it is. It's great if you gain weight or lose weight because you can make it wherever you want. Okay, but a belt like this. And you put it around like that. It would be a super cute closure. Depending on the theme of your journal. Another one you could use is a belt like this. So get the, you know, the belt buckle, which is very pretty. Measure out where you need the hole. Poke your hole, cut your belt, and then you would have another custom look. You could also just cut off this part of the belt with the buckle and use some other type of material to come around and thread it through. You could take the buckle off all by itself and attach it to some fabric and use just the fabric. So old belts you have, you know, you can use buck the buckles, any belt buckles you have laying around. Those kind of things would also make super cute closures for your journals. Now the last thing, I actually got the inspiration, it's funny. I got the inspiration from that tag we did with the zipper. But when I went and pulled journals, this one actually has a zipper on it, but it's just for decor. What I would do is move the zipper, it's sewn on so I can't actually do that, but move the zipper over here and attach it here, cut it to where, you know, it's, the zipper is like this, okay? And sew your zipper in and then have a zippered journal. How cute would that be? And it would totally work. So that is another idea for a journal closure is using zippers. So we've talked about a lot. We've talked about belt buckles. We've talked about zippers. We've talked about Velcro but buttons. We've talked about sewing, um, the ribbons into or gluing the ribbons onto the cover and we've talked about poking holes. I think we've covered a lot of options for journal closures. So guys I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. Also if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button and that little bell. I am looking to grow. I'd love to hit a thousand by New Year's Eve. Wouldn't that be a big celebration? And I would have to do like a really big giveaway, like maybe, I don't know, a hundred dollar gift certificate somewhere. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. So we got to get to a thousand. I'd love to be past a thousand by then, but definitely a thousand by December 31st. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell and click all so you'll know when we post. Also, you don't want to miss out on the polls the questions I pose because I really do listen to you. I want to give you videos that you guys would like. So definitely, if nothing else, for that. On Wednesday, like I said, it's our art video. We're going to be talking backgrounds for mixed media, but these are not book pages and a little paint. These are way in-depth techniques that a lot of mixed media artists use every day. We're also going to be doing another little fun quick sketch, and I think everybody will enjoy it. 
So I will see everybody on Wednesday. If you aren't into the art stuff, that's fine. I will be back on Friday with whatever video you guys tell me you want to see. Bye. Take care.